Hi Chris here, back with the Thunder Obot Zero Gaming laptop. Now this is a laptop I bought, and one of the reasons I went for it is because it does actually support two PCIe 4.0 slots. One of the SSD slots is already full, and what I've actually installed in this one here is the Sabrent Rocket Drive. And that's because I've got this, the Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus. They sent this out to me in exchange for this review you're watching. So we'll do a bit of a comparison here to the older model, the PCI 3 spec drive, compare it to this newer, faster Rocket 4 Plus PCI 4.0 to take a look at what kind of differences we can expect out of the new gen of SSD. And I will show you also how to install the drive in a gaming laptop, for example, this one right here. And our Rocket 4 Plus, so this is the retail packaging. It's in this little box here, but inside is a tin container that it's in, so it's very safe, not going to get damaged. On the back of it, just stating it's a Rocket 4 Plus, and this is the two terabyte capacity that I have. So this simply slips out, and very nice packaging. Open it up, you then have right here an instruction guide, but I will show you how to install this in my laptop that does have a spare PCIe 4.0 slot. You can install it into a PCIe 3.0, but you won't, of course, get the benefit of the faster speeds that the Rocket 4 Plus has. So two terabyte. This goes all the way up to eight now. They've just recently announced they have this now in an eight terabyte capacity, which is absolutely huge. So there is this label over the top, and it's very thin, but I think it's copper too there as well, so that will dissipate a little bit of heat. Try not to touch those contacts at the end, you really don't want to do that. And that is the underside there of it. So we don't actually see the controller or any of the chips. You'd have to pretty much void your warranty then, lifting those up to view them, which I won't be doing in this video. So every laptop will be a little bit different here. So this model I have here is called the Thunder Obot. It has an RTX 3070, 140 watt, with the Core i7-11800. All the screws on the bottom, you have to remove those. Sometimes some laptops under the rubber feet, there will be hidden screws. They need to be removed. Now use a plastic pry tool to go around the outside and very carefully lift off the lid of it here. Now every laptop will be a bit different. Some laptops even have screws on the other side that screw through it underneath the keyboard to hold on the rear plate, but luckily this one doesn't have any complications like that. Then you need to locate your PCIe slot here, the M.2 PCIe. So you can see I've already got one of them full. Now the good thing about this particular laptop, and one of the reasons why I ended up buying it, is because it does have two PCIe 4.0 slots in it. So you can see I've got the empty one right here. The screw luckily is included here. So I simply need to, of course, remove this screw. And then now the drive, just slot that in. Again, be careful not to touch those contacts. You really do not want to do that, just in case to be on the safe side. So it slots in and it is double-sided. So some motherboards, this could actually be a little bit tight that when you screw it in, but I've done it on other motherboards before and it shouldn't be a problem. So that one's fine, there is plenty of room. Most gaming laptops will have a lot of space in there to do this. So that's screwed into place now. So this is my secondary drive right here is my boot drive. Now you could set it up that your boot drive would be the PCI 4 spec one, which would be a lot faster than this older Sabrent here, which is just PCI 3.0 spec on here. And just before I get onto the benchmarks, just a little information about the drive here. So it's the two terabyte one I've got. It has a Fison controller in it, which is the E18, you can see information there on the sequential reads, the writes, the power consumption, and just pause this if you want to see this information or check it out on their website too as well. And you can see our mean time between failures here, okay, very high, and the shock resistance, also data correction, and the total terabytes written there, sorry of 1400 and a five year warranty. So let's take a look at the benchmarks and exactly what kind of speeds you can expect out of this drive. Now with these benchmarks here I'm about to show you, I did set my laptop into the performance mode. I double, triple check that there was nothing running in the background, no silly Windows updates or anything like that, which would be taking away a little bit of my CPU power. So this right here on the left, that is the new drive, the Sabrent Rocket Plus 2 terabyte PCI 4 spec. This is right here, my boot drive, 
which is my Sabrent Rocket. And this one, of course, is PCI3 spec. That's the original version versus the Plus. They're both two terabytes. And you can see the difference there is huge going from PCI 3.0 to PCI 4.0. We are talking about doubling the speeds and over when it does come to the sequential uh, writes there. You can see really, really good. And the random reads, so over here, very good for the random writes there too. So excellent results, that's a big step up. So what does this mean in real world use? Well, launch times for applications, getting into games and things will be a bit faster. Is it game changing difference? Do you notice the difference while running a PCI 4 drive versus PCI 3? I don't see too much of a difference, just that things might be marginally a fraction quicker there. And that is basically it. However, if you're transferring lots of files or you need something that's very demanding when it comes to your storage performance, it's always better if your laptop does support it to get the PCA4, of course. A couple of other benchmarks here are the AS SSD benchmark. Now this one, it does fall behind a little bit there and I'm not too sure why. I just think it's the differences between the benchmarks and the way they read and measure these speeds here. But still, it's very good there, completely beating any PCI 3.0 drive there, even at that kind of speed there in the result. And the other one right here is the ATTO disk benchmark, which a lot of people still do use. So for writes, we are getting very good speeds here and the reads, again, it is showing that it is a little slower than their claims. However, with the crystal disk mark result right here, that is still pretty much what they're claiming, okay? So the reads have been 7,000 sequential, and 7,000 for the rights. I mean, it's very close to that. It's just only a little bit off there. So blazing fast drive, excellent performance out of it. So there we go. Make sure, of course, you do have a PCIe 4 laptop. So that's Intel's 11th gen or 11th gen desktop at the time of this video, if you want to take advantage of those blazing fast, really good speeds. So the newer control, the newer gen here of SSD and that DDR4 cache that it does have with it, really helping out to boost up those speeds and performance versus the older PCIe 3.0 spec, that other rocket drive, the original rocket drive that I've got, you can see that it's day and night there, that the difference is, well, it's really about double the performance of that one. Now I have had that two terabyte drive for a long time now, and I've been writing a lot of terabytes to it, and no problems whatsoever, it has never failed me. Now I'm not just saying that because Oh yeah, hey, you got sent this drive from Sabrent to review. No, because I'm an actual user and I haven't had any problems. So pricing wise, these are normally a little bit cheaper than the competition, say for example, the Samsung 980 Pro. So it's another reason to go for these particular drives here. And just remember, yeah, you do need to have that 11th gen. You can still install it in a PC, in your motherboard or in your laptop, if it's still PCA3 spec, but of course you will not get those speeds there. So there we go. That's my review of the new Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus 2 terabyte SSD.